Please stay tuned for another edition of South Center's Chat. We have two special guests coming today from OSU Extension and Farm Science Review. We'll be right back. Welcome to this edition of South Centers Chat. My name is Tom Worley. I serve as director of OSU South Centers at Piketon, Ohio. And it's my pleasure to welcome two special guests today with me on this particular chat. Jackie Kirby Wilkins is the interim director of Ohio State University Extension. Welcome, Jackie. And Nick Zacharich is our manager for the College of Farm Science Review at the Molly Karen Center out at uh, London, Ohio. So we really welcome both these special guests today. And uh, Jackie, I know that uh, OSU Extension is mission driven. And uh, if you cared to share a little overview of Extension and the vision and mission that we have for OSU. Thank you, Tom. I always appreciate the opportunity to do that. We are obviously um, part of the land grant effort of Ohio State University and nationally. And our goal is really to take that information out from the university, the research that's done, and provide that in uh, a lot of mechanisms that translate that research into everyday learning and uh, with a really a goal of helping Ohioans have the knowledge and resources that they need to actively engage in creating conditions in which they thrive. So we create opportunities for people to explore some of the science-based knowledge that we bring from the university and think about how they might translate that into the different activities and knowledge locally that are gonna improve social, economic, and environmental conditions. And as you know, Tom, we've got um, professionals in 88 different counties in the areas of community development, 4-H positive youth development, ag and natural resources, and family and consumer sciences. And we'll learn a little bit more about what they're doing uh, this, this uh, time of COVID over the next uh, half hour. So I appreciate the time. Perfect, thank you so much. And. Uh fits right into the uh, vision and mission that you have shared is the whole operation at Farm Science Review that Nick Zacharich is heading up. And we've just come through the month of September and uh, gotten, I guess, almost a month beyond Farm Science Review, but it's a great time to kind of look back and, and hear a little bit of overview from you, Nick, about uh, the change, obviously, online. You have that on your slide. And uh, share with us a little bit about uh, how Farm Science Review was handled this past September. Great, and thanks for the invitation, Tom, to talk a little bit about Farm Science Review 2020, which was all online. So uh, in our 58 shows, this is the first time it's been all online, of course, you know, with the recent technology we've had in the last decade or so that's been allowing us to share more things online, uh, but this is the first time it's been all online. Um, and that, that's unfortunate for a lot of us because in, in many ways with the education and the exhibitors with the commercial space, it's um, a lot of the things that we do is, is derived on the events and the interactions that we have there. Uh, but at least with the technology we have with Zoom like we're doing today and uh, the other avenues that we have with uh, seeing virtual field trips and um, being able to set up different ways to, to interact with folks across the state and across the world even now with the access is is kind of expanded uh, where people don't have to worry about the, the travel. Um, and that, that we can talk about those limitations that folks had here in a minute. But in you know, the last 58 years, this is the first time that we've had to worry about it. But in the future, now we can look at the, the tools that we were able to use this year and maybe capitalize a little bit on some of the expertise that we gained as a staff around the college and through extension mostly uh, to be able to interact with, with folks across the, the state and the world. So in, in the, the 60 years about that we've, we've been at Farm Science Review, you know, we've, we've strived to provide the education on technology that's been occurring in the industry for agriculture and the, and the surrounding uh, parts of the industry that, that support agriculture as well. And this is a kind of a good uh, a year, you know, in, in a situation where we can't safely meet in person for thousands of people. Um, it's a good way for, for folks to be able to get used to some of the new technology that will help those production agriculture folks that are out there, whether they're actually a producer or, or uh, supporting that industry and be able to use some of these tools that maybe we haven't really dived into uh, too much as an industry yet, 
and now we're going to become experts on because even different parts of the industry now with with commodity groups and folks are starting to get into these these uh, virtual conferences uh, much the same way that we did and and now we're the experts and we can also impart that knowledge that we've gained through holding the event virtually with some of those groups that we partner with on a regular basis anyway. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's definitely a new experience, both uh, in terms of the presentations and uh, your preparations and the delivery, but also for those uh, in the uh, receiving end. And uh, I think we, like a lot of our programs, we'll find uh, you know nuggets where the, we've reached a broader audience and people that might not have actually shown up in person, but actually experienced some of Farm Science Review by having it uh, available online. So I know uh, that uh, from my perspective, you know, some of the uh, things that are most visible at Farm Science Review are, is the huge exhibit area. I forget how many acres that covers, but it's a uh, crisscross laid out in blocks like a, a city streets and so forth. And you might talk a little bit about how you work with the setup and preparing and working with the exhibitors that are normally there with all their huge equipment and different technologies and every fertilizer company, seed company, chemical company, uh, just any service provider to agriculture and rural America is there. You, can you help uh, describe how that transition took place and how you handled that in advance? Yeah, and, and I'll say that the working with the exhibitors, it's a primary role of my position is, is bringing those companies in and, and working them with them through the, out the year, not just, you know, leading up to the show, but um, it's a year-round process for us and staying in communication with them. And one of the things that I will really miss this year is the other shows that occur. So um, a lot of people, you know, familiar with Farm Science Review as the big, you know, agricultural trade show that we're used to attending. Um, may not realize the other large agricultural trade shows, we work as a peer system so that we kind of operate as a, as a one big system um, for exhibitors. So the displays and all the nice things that they bring, um, they would not be able to afford just to come to Farm Science Review. So they're building them for multiple shows and carrying them around the country to different places so that we can all utilize those. Um, you know, and, and the, the times that I go to these other shows, I'm talking with the exhibitors there. So these uh, large manufacturers mostly and larger companies, um, as they travel around the show, they, they have different folks that, that work on the, the show site than the people that design and set up the show site. So during, while the show's happening is a primary time for me to be able to talk to some of those folks that do set up the show sites and uh, be able to, to learn about what's happening, what, what needs that they have coming forward. Um, so that's kind of a piece that we have missed a little bit and communications happen to happen in different ways this year. Uh, but with the exhibitors, um, you know, one of the big things for them was the travel restrictions that they had. You know, with all of us internally at Ohio State, we were very aware of the travel restrictions we have for ourselves you know, through our institution, uh, all those major companies have those travel restrictions uh, just the same way. So, um, you know, we have the major manufacturers that we talk about mostly with, with Agco and John Deere and Case IH and all these other manufacturers that are very large. Um, a lot of the people that are coming to our shows are from states away and are not able to travel. So that was one of the biggest limitations that we had. And field demonstrations are very important for our show. Uh, we have a, a, a strong following there with a very good, you know, well-attended field demonstration space. You know, it's the most acres of any farm show in, in the world for live demonstration. So we have something very unique and we're very proud of. So we had to try to make sure that we incorporated that some way into our show online. And that was one of the things that we really were, were critical about of being safe, um, of not allowing too many people on site at one time. So there's a limitation there as, as well as, you know, we talked about the travel restrictions. Um, and we also need to support that field demonstration with some of our own employees. So not just within our department of Ohio State, we, we uh, receive a lot of help through uh, extension in our facilities with, with the OERDC that you are all very familiar with. Uh, there's a lot of help that, that comes to the show site annually for Farm Science to make those demonstrations happen. And so we need to have some of that support to be able to make the demonstrations happen this year, even virtually. Um, and, and it's a little bit different, of course, because we didn't have a, a huge lineup of exhibitors uh, but the support was was different in, in the fact that we needed the audio visual help to be able to capture some of the video um, and also you know the audio is a very important aspect to video and, and then some of the educators were a little bit different than what we typically have one of the key pieces that we were able to capitalize a little this year on was our parking lot is is mostly a grass field it's a hay field and and in normal circumstances it's full of cars and trucks uh, for people coming to visit the show and this year we were able to utilize that as a hay field for demonstration so that was one of the pieces that we were able to focus a little bit more on and not so much the corn and soybean harvest and tillage that typically occurs. We're able to move over to the hay field and, and John Deere and Chrome were two of the companies that were able to, 
to be able to utilize that and, and provide some good quality educational material too through our extension network on some of the, the educators are focused on hay and livestock. Absolutely, absolutely. And were there drones involved in some of this uh, uh, preparation of recording and so forth of the equipment in action? There, there was, and fortunately for us, um, we have an employee on our staff that is uh, licensed and we have the approval for, and, and you know, at, at Ohio State, we have a lot of restrictions on things and being very safe about things. Um, so it's very limited on, on the aircraft that's used and, and all these different rules that we were following. So uh, fortunately for us, we're very close to our airport and we work with them very closely on many different things, um, especially when we do flights throughout the years. So at the Molly Karen Agricultural Center, where the, where the farm science review is home, uh, we do regular flights uh, on our land so that we can uh, use that aerial imagery for different purposes. Um, you know, it's, with some of it's stand counts uh, with population. Some of it, um, it is just uh, just get capturing data to see what we can do with it and doing some research projects on large scale with that. Um, mm -hmm. So we do regularly fly and we do have that drone capability of doing uh, just video. And that was very helpful in capturing some of the content that we were able to, to utilize for Farm Science Review. Absolutely. You also have a really good partnership with FABE who has a lot of uh, drone technology and um, are there any examples of what you can share with how they interface with that? Yeah, and, and one of the, the things that we worked on throughout the show then um, as we did some live demonstrations and, and also some things leading up to the show with some of the machinery that did come in um, and the partnership that FAB has with Case IH and then uh, the partnerships that we have through John Deere. So we're able to use two of the major manufacturers in our agricultural space to be able to not necessarily do some care comparisons, but just kind of highlight some of the things that those machines are capable of doing. Um, whether it's just the technology for people just to, to reference if they're not a producer, but also for producers to see what the new technology is on a few of those machines. Um, so working with, with FABE with some of those projects was very helpful and they were the leaders on that field demonstration crew to be able to put cameras in different places and be able to put sensors on, on machines where we don't typically have. Uh, you know, during a, a normal presentation. So instead of uh, exhibitors having the machines running through the field with the visitors behind a rope, um, people were able to see look much more closely in those videos of what was happening on the machines um, at, at, on, at a different way. You know, so there's a lot of value in being there in person and seeing the machine run and seeing what the harvest loss was from a combine, all those different things that we think about. But there's a lot of value also in, in the data that we can collect uh, real time and, and see what's happening with those machines. You get an up close uh, look that uh, you know it's just different perspectives. Sometimes I'm sure you can see things on the uh, computer screen that you can't observe that closely. You know when you're there in person, as you say, kind of behind the ropes and so forth. But maybe you could get close ups and so forth. Well, Nick, it's it's fascinating, and as I say, the big machinery and uh, you know shiny paint captures a lot of eyeballs. But there's a lot of educational programs at Farm Science Review. And those went on in uh, really in a big way this year, I think that extension and, and our college experts stepped up to the task and had uh, lots of uh, things going on uh, that you wanna maybe share just a thumbnail sketch of the STEM programs and ask the experts, those things that people are used to picking up on education wise at Farm Science. Absolutely, and, and as we've talked to different shows across the world about what's being, being done is successful and which things are struggling, we know that the educational aspect of, of shows, whether you know, when they're typically all in person and not have a lot of education or a lot of sem seminars or sessions, those ones struggled a little bit this year, where the ones that had a very strong emphasis on education and seminars and sessions did very well. Um, so that's a very strong piece that really helped make Farm Science Review Online very successful was mm -hmm. the folks that really want to come to Farm Science Review to find that education were still willing to come online to find that same, same space. Um, you know, the same style of, of, of information they were collecting when they came in person. So that was one major uh, advantage that we had as, as a farm show and a trade show um, is, is having that, that back, uh, the, the very strong back of, of Ohio State Extension. Um, so as, as we looked around this, the space, you know, we, we had our typical Ask the Expert session in small farms where a lot of people typically come and listen to those sessions. Um, and then with our, our agronomic crops team was, was one good example because it's, it's performing very well when we look at the numbers um, because they made a virtual uh, field trip, basically a virtual tour of that space where they have uh, small plots, they're replicated plots of some of the things that they do at where we already see research stations and some are just kind of eye, eye visual, eye catching things that people as they walk through the show site see that and think, well, what are they doing there? And they come and take a look and it starts a conversation. So. They were able to take that, that tour 
and make it all virtual so you can walk through it almost like as if you were there and it's and it's attracting a lot of people uh, to see what was happening in that space and Absolutely. probably more so than if it was in person yes yes well i think you've got some uh, measures of the success of farm science review in terms of uh hits on the uh, uh, programs and the various aspects of Farm Science Review that you might want to summarize for us. Yeah, and, and, and uh, we're really pleased with where we're at. When we talked about success before the show happened, we were kind of looking at numbers and, and thinking about what would be successful. And we're looking at numbers right now that, um, you know, the, the impact that we have across the state and the region and even the world is, is really the same virtually as it is in person in some respects. You know, when we think about the demographics that we're reaching, it may be a little different this year, but we're reaching about the same number of people. So you mentioned earlier that some people that maybe had uh, issues getting to the site for whatever reason, maybe they're too far away, or, or maybe um, they have harvest that they have to think about and they're not able to come in a certain year, they may be able to see that. And as harvest progresses, I'm sure that these numbers will even still inflate more as farmers finish up their harvest for the fall, whether it's pumpkins wrapping up now or corn and soybeans, all those different things. Um, when we look at the numbers, uh, those are going to still continue to increase. Um, social media numbers, you know, if we look at the FSR Facebook, that actually includes a lot of the other social media, but Facebook is our primary uh, communication method for social media. So that's where those numbers are at. And as the expert, you know, we're right on the same line of uh, how many people attended virtually as there was on site. Um, and, and that's very uh, indicative of some of the other uh, areas of the show site as well and program areas that the, the numbers were about the same. Some did not do as well and some did better. And um, it kind of evens out and is about the same. And our FSR online is the show platform. So uh, as you go to fsr.osu.edu, where the show, you know, our normal website is, there's, a, there's a, a, a big graphic that you can click on to go to different program areas to help you navigate to what it is that you're most interested in. And as you uh, navigate into the show site, that's where those uh, 159,000 uh, views are from. Um, so not necessarily number of people, because some people did view more than one thing uh, sure. or go around the site a little bit more. And as you look at the Cornerstone conversation, our, our, our leader, Dean Kress, she always has a, um, a, a luncheon that she hosts. And um, we typically have four to 500 people there and it's already reached over 1400 people. So that reach has, has increased this year and, and um, total impressions across the site. We know that these are the, the bare minimums too because things have been shared in multiple different avenues. Uh, so the Farm Science Review online views um, counts uh, a certain number of people that visited those, but they were shared in different ways. If, if somebody had uh, difficulty navigating through the site, then some of the educators were able to send those links directly to people that requested those. And there's a lot of different ways that we can look at those. These are basically the minimums of the impressions that we have and it is far greater. Um, and it's, it, you would think on a digital uh, side, we'd be able to really figure out exactly how many people were there, but it becomes very difficult with all the different avenues and, and pathways of getting to those pieces. Yeah. And this is as of October 20th, and as as uh, as Nick was saying, especially with the farm, I'm um, sorry, with the uh, Facebook pages and social media, a lot of those numbers haven't updated for the month because they look at those on a monthly basis. Mm -hmm. We expect that this number is well over 750,000 at this point, and that's not even including, as Nick said, those that might share it with others through a non-calculable um, uh, approach to that. So we're very mm -hmm. excited about the reach that we've been able to have. Absolutely, absolutely. And we're looking to uh, next year already, uh, Nick, and uh, beginning to think about it. And uh, I, I know that, uh, you know, uh, the in-person, the live in-person aspect is uh, uh, the way it has always been. But I would envision that next year might be a bit of a hybrid. Uh, who knows how it's going to work out. But I would think all this uh, that you talked about earlier in terms of the pre-recording and the sharing of uh, different videos and uh, that were done, that those will probably stick around even if the show goes on as uh, we know and love it, I guess. Yep, and that's, that's correct, Tom. And that's, you know, that's what we do in, in extension. You know, we like to get in front of people. We like to educate and, and, and perform in that manner. And it's a little different this year and it's a different skill set that we've learned. And, and really when we look at our long-term plans, this is kind of where we wanted to be in five to 10 years of being able to broadcast our sessions, you know, mm -hmm. virtually um, in, in some respect, it was more of a thought of doing it video wise or live on YouTube or whatever the case may be with the tools that we had available, this worked very well and we can kind of work, work towards that again. So the software that we use to be able to put on, uh, you know, farm science review with an online directory and a mobile app, those are kind of the, the pieces that led into what we were able to do. So I'm very thankful we decided to go into the virtual world somewhat before the digital world 
of having that online directory so that we could uh, transition very quickly. You know, the, the, the people, the very, you know, I guess the, the hot topic word in the, in the world is, you know, being able to pivot and change and, and who can pivot the fastest or be able to make that happen. You know, in a university setting, sometimes that can be difficult for us because we have a huge shift to be able to steer and go to a different direction and different way to do things. And, you know, this year, um, since we did have all this, the Zoom platform in place and we had uh, some people already working in that, that space, we were able to pivot and change and have provide that education, but also in the same respect with the software we had for the show, it, it enabled us for, to do that as well. So we're looking at that and, and we, we, now that we have some, some different tools available to us because of what has happened through the pandemic, we will continue to use these a little bit. So we probably won't have, you know, we had 222 educational sessions this year. We probably will not have 222 available online, but what we will do is look at what areas um, are, make it very easy for us to uh, record those on the site as they happen and, and be able to put some of those online, but then record those and, and post them later as well. And that's what we're doing right now is, is working on those recordings, touching them up a little bit, providing the closed captioning so that we can post those and they're very effective and accessible to everyone. And um, so as we go through next July, when we, we post our new directory for 2021, we will still keep this, this uh, platform accessible to everybody uh, through June till we put the new one up. And so people can still go back and see the recorded sessions. And so the recorded sessions are still a work in progress. There's gonna be a few each day being added. And um, you can watch our social media where we plan to highlight about 20% of those. Uh, 222 is a lot to be able to put on our social media. So we'll probably group a few things together as a, as a kind of a lump, but also highlight some of the, the, the key areas that we feel are still relevant, still. Uh, very much, um, you, you know, the, the content of those those sessions are very much uh, relevant to what's happening today. Great, great. Nick, uh, so appreciate what you've uh, been able to do uh, on relatively short notice, as you say, in a university setting to do that pivot from uh, live and in-person. I know the decision uh, was put off as long as possible, you know, as to what to do, but uh, obviously a, a very successful uh, transition and Good things were learned that we'll uh, still incorporate. And Jackie, we want to use our remaining few minutes here to kind of recognize that OSU Extension is a big part of Farm Science Review and all program areas are active in that educational program and actually uh, manning the displays and booths that the college has at Farm Science Review. But maybe Ag Natural Resources, there's some other things going on that you might want to highlight. Yeah, there absolutely are. Um, before we leave the Farm Science Review, just again, kudos to Nick and his Farm Science Review team. Um, again, a big shout out to all of our educators. There was probably over 30 different um, educators and partners who uh, collaborated weekly after the decision was made in, in uh, late July to be able to move to this platform. And that was a, that was a mammoth uh, effort. And I think we uh, put together a, a production team that brought in video and media and other things, and they all worked together seamlessly to, to do something um, that um, they weren't prepared for prior to COVID and had to, uh, and to, had to succeed pretty quickly. So uh, again, uh, Nick mentioned a lot of those will be up on the Farm Science Review site, but as a lot of those were created by uh, individual educators or teams, they'll also be working on some of those other 222 uh, videos, getting the same closed captioning and transcripting done, and getting those shared through a wide variety of different uh, venues across the state throughout the year. So we're excited about uh, the success of that, and thanks again to Nick and his crew. Absolutely. In addition, though, um, you know, the rest of uh, Extension doesn't uh, stay just focused on uh, one aspect, and the whole world keeps asking for other things. And so um, just a couple highlights across different program areas, if I could. So Ag and Natural Resources, a few things that I'm highlighting this month include, include some additional virtual events. Um, this month, I wanted to just really uh, identify the Tremendous Tuesdays. And so a lot of tree enthusiasts can uh, learn more about identifying different varieties and learn about the different species. And then especially uh, the conservation and the care and keeping of those uh, over time. We also have, uh, with Dave Apsley in our, in our group and partnerships, the uh, virtual day in the woods. And so they've moved that now into a virtual environment. They do that on the second Friday of each month. And I would encourage people to go take a look at that. There's already uh, information, login information, and content for what's already up there and ways to go back. And, and that's one of the benefits of the video piece and uh, the virtual part is that these don't become static um, one person events where it's a certain day and whoever can show up can show up, but they can be shared broadly over time. And then um, we're really excited about the winter programming for our Ag and Natural Resource area. So each team, and you can see the teams listed in this, um, in this infographic uh, and the different topics that are gonna be covered. 
So each team's gonna offer at least five statewide programs. That's another benefit of some of the video and virtual work that's being done, digital engagement through COVID, is it doesn't again have to be within one county, but it can be shared statewide. So our expertise is actually amplified across the state. So the program catalog is gonna be posted on the ANR website at agnr.osu.edu. And uh, that's gonna be continuing to be populated as the planning continues here over the next few weeks. So we're very excited about that and hope you'll all join us and see Great. what is happening there. Got a variety of teams that work to deliver all of that and family consumer science team over um, as well. Absolutely, so family consumer science, again, as I've mentioned before, covers the entire lifespan from pre-birth and, and just relationships and families, uh, individuals and communities and looks at things related to adapting uh, to change and embracing some change is the focus of of their work right now. They're having their annual conference here uh, in the next uh, few weeks. And as you can see by this infographic, they cover a whole variety of areas in FCS, including home ownership, aging, healthy people, healthy finances, food and nutrition, retirement, um, just you name it. And so they work with a variety of partners in every community, and they're doing a wide variety of, of things as well. I don't want to highlight um, a million of them because there quite literally are hundreds of those right now. But if you go to fcs.osu.edu, you'll see some of that. I did want to focus on two uh, highlights for them this uh, month. One is they've just received a national award uh, related to uh, housing and home buying. And so our national team, you see them listed here at the top, has really worked with um, over 11 communities. And in, in 2019 alone, uh, they were able to help individuals uh, acquire homes in the value uh, and selling of homes upwards of 91 a million dollars wow. there. They've worked with uh, 11 housing counselors, four different teams. They've completed the HUD housing counselor exam and they're working in partnership with the Ohio Housing Finance Agency and uh, a variety of partners locally to ensure that those individuals who most have had struggles saving for, uh, whether it's their credit scores or navigating the mortgage process uh, and all those different types of things or avoiding foreclosure, especially in this time of COVID, is so, so important. So want to highlight all the good work that they're doing around keeping people under a roof right now. And then uh, 4-H is going to be having their celebration of youth. This is their annual fundraiser. Uh, it's called Pathways to the Future this year. It's going to be a virtual event this year. And so usually that's an invite only and, and a couple hundred people pack into the 4-H Center. But this year it can be absolutely anybody and everybody that hears about this. So I would encourage um, those that are interested in helping raise some additional funds for 4-H, especially as they've you know, dealt with some of the um, loss of income based on some programs they weren't able to do, especially over the summer, in particular their camps. Uh, greatest needs this year include their 4-H camp facilities, innovative program development and delivery, and then capacity support for engaging youth in our 88 counties. So you can go to this go.osu.edu slash COY for celebration of youth. For details, they've got um, an online auction with really cool things there, and I know I'm going to go shopping, so I hope some of you will join us. They really have a lot of nice items donated, uh, even uh, experience things, uh, overnight stays and golf outings and you name it. So there are a lot of nice things there. Exactly. Jackie, uh, I think that you uh, have one more program area, community development. Yeah, community development. I don't have a slide for it, um, but what I wanted to just highlight is they're doing a lot of localized uh, programs during COVID. And so two that I wanted to highlight, one is Fayette County, where they've been working closely with um, a variety of partners in the community to distribute PPE to keep businesses open and safe uh, during COVID as they start to, to reopen their, their offices, do business, and um, learn about all the different things that can keep them from um, contributing to the spread and keep their doors open. And in Medina County, they've, con they've collaborated with a variety of local celebrities, including uh, Medina County uh, leadership program and our county commissioners to uh, develop STEM kits. And so they put together upwards of, um, they started with about 500 kits that they distributed to children during COVID. And that's helping keep kids engaged, especially over the summer. And then while school's um, happening with a lot of homeschooling and that's continuing to grow in popularity and, and they'll continue to do that. We're also now um, looking at a, a conversation with COSI to think about additional kits that we can do collaboratively and get some of these kits out across the state. Jackie, uh, forgive me, but I know we're just about out of time for this session, and I uh, see that you had a couple other items that were more internal oriented to the structure and activities in OSU Extension. If you want to just summarize and wrap that up, why I think we would be in great shape. 
Absolutely. Um, just one real quick, the Knowledge Exchange launched October 1st, and that's where we do a lot of our research translation. And so I hope that you'll go there and you'll be able to find some of the Farm Science Review content, as well as things related to ag crisis and COVID-19, and then ongoing issues and opportunities. We just identified a new mentoring program that we're putting in place for a lot of our new employees, as we've seen a lot of retirements and a lot of new um, individuals joining our ranks. And so we're putting together um, a formalized mentoring process that's going to help people um, understand that culture of learning, collaboration and trust, building relationships with extension colleagues, and modeling best practices across the state. As a quick uh, operations update, again, I told you last time when we were here, we were getting back into the offices in each of our counties, and we're looking at each of those, obviously, with um, focusing on um, reducing spread, making sure that we're offering the programs that we should staying within the University, Ohio Department of Health and CDC guidelines. And then we're individualizing plans in those offices each week as we look at the colors across the state and whether or not they've got high numbers of COVID or lower and thinking about how we address the public needs while keeping everyone safe. We've started some in-person programming in late July after we um, were told we could kind of get out and about a little bit. Since then, we've done 250 uh, or more um, unique in-person programming events across the state. We're still offering things virtually when and if we can, and we're keeping these things at the time critical items with less than 50 people at each of these and working locally with our Ohio Departments of Health. Um, but we are obviously doing our best to keep taking that research and information out to the, to the state. So I just wanted to um, bring your attention to, if you wanna learn more about your local OSU Extension offices, or at this time of year, I know a lot of people are thinking about um, who do you um, wanna give to as you think about end of year giving, please consider looking at your local extension offices. I know they've, again, uh, been impacted a bit by um, local dollars and then also um, inability to do some of that face-to-face -face programming. So visit us at extension.osu.edu slash LAO for um, locating the offices. Excellent, excellent. Jackie, thank you so much uh, for joining us again today uh, and Nick. I think it's uh, my first time to have you with uh, South Center's chat, but we look forward to more chatting. I think, uh, you know, when you get two people that kind of have that farm background, there's easy to keep the conversation going. Well, I really appreciate your participation and being with us today. We'll wrap it up now with this edition of South Center's chat and look for you next time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tom.